My name is Diane Peters. I'm the Director of Education for Champ Assistance Dogs. We're located uh, on Parker Road out here in the Florissant area, well, Blackjack area. Uh, we don't have a sign, so if you would like to contribute for that, we <laughs> <that'd be great. laughs> um, but we do have an address. Uh, it's a, an old farmhouse that we rehabbed, and we've, ha we've been there since our, almost our beginning. We started uh, 19 years ago. Yeah, long time. We're fully accredited. <coughs> we're fully accredited through um, Assistance Dogs International. There are about 150 organizations in the world that train dogs for service work that are accredited. So that's a big deal. We're very proud of that. Um, we are also partnered with the women's uh, prison in Vandalia, Missouri. They do our training for our service dogs. We also have a rescue program up there called Champ to the Rescue. And we've been doing that for about 13 years. Um, we take dogs at this point from the Humane Society of Missouri and they do a safer test with the dog and then um, if the dog seems like it will perhaps go into the prison program then we take it up and it'll stay four to two to four months in that program and we find homes for them so they get a second chance they get some manners uh, they learn that people are good and people provide food and fun and take care of them so they learn to trust again because they most of them have been neglected so um, that's kind of our background we're around and we're staying around <laughs> um, we have a very active therapy program which our people and their pets go through that program and we'll be talking about that because we have a lovely example here <laughs> There's our lovely. <laughs> and um, we've been doing that almost pretty much from the beginning, like our education program. I retired early from teaching so that I could do CHAMP full time. Um, it's been a good choice. <laughs> I brought my service dog, Calgary, with me today. She is a golden retriever. She's six years old. She's not going to be petted today. She meets around 8,000 people every year. So that would be too much. Too much on the dog. Too much on her, yes. Right now, she also makes therapy visits with me. She's an exceptional kind of dog because she does know when she can meet and when she can't but I try not to overload her on the meeting so she doesn't get confused. Tonight we're going to meet with some children from young people um, from I think it's called American Heritage Girls and they're out in the O'Fallon area and I'm sorry but they get to meet her. <laughs> I made my choice <laughs> but you will get to meet this big guy and he's extremely handsome. So before we go on with the rest of the program, do you have any questions about us? Yes? Do you take volunteers as far as, you said that you guys have a rescue program. Uh-huh. Do you take volunteers as far as grooming volunteers? They're in the prison. Okay. So not, not at the locations? No, we don't have any dogs at our, our location is a very small house. Our dogs all live with their trainers or with their puppy raisers. We tried to do this, we haven't expanded beyond that, we, we're not going to. We want our dogs to always live with somebody and have as natural of an experience as they can, even though I know they're in prison. <laughs> they are living with somebody and they're living in their room. It isn't a cell, it's a room. And there are usually four offenders in a room and they may have up to two trainers in there. The rest, the other people, the extra people, the extra offenders are volunteers for our program. 
They live in the dog wing, and I'll talk more about that when we talk about service dogs. Okay. Yes? How do, you, how do you differ from Make an eye contact. <laughs> Make an eye contact. <laughs> yes? How long is duration of training? Usually, the training takes from, we start them, we want to start them at eight weeks unless they come through rescue. Once in a while we get a dog through rescue that we can place as a service dog. But usually we start them at eight weeks and they're not placed until, until they're about two, two and a half. My girl was three. Not because she's learned slowly, <laughs> but um, we had her stayed later so she couldn't work a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Yes. How do you differ? How does Champs differ from support dogs? Or uh, is there a difference? Yes. Okay. Uh, they, there's a lot of differences. Um, they're a much larger group. Uh, I started with them. <coughs> um, they have um, a huge facility that's brand new now. Um, they place around the country and we're local. We retain ownership of our dogs. We're always there. We're there from cradle to grave. Um, if you need extra help, we're at your house. When we do our placements, we come to the home. Most larger groups have people come for two weeks to their facility, and we come to your home. And it usually takes a couple months. Um, Ready? Yeah. Want to see some stuff? Or, yeah. Okay, so we're going to have our therapy dog person. Oh! She said ready. Yes, I did. <laughs> Who said that? Good. I did that the last time we had a presentation. I used that same word, and she did the same thing. Whose fault is that? <laughs> And I, will, and I didn't tell you, but usually if there's a mistake, it's mine. <laughs> okay. So, would you I am Debbie, and this is Beckett. He's a Beckett's <coughs> Mountain Dog. He's two and a half years old. And we graduated from the program a year and a half ago. And it's a, dogs have to go and take a temperament test, so they have to know their basic obedience. And then they lead us up, they take us out of the room, and then they do tests with him on his temperament to make sure they don't freak out, get nervous, and then it's a 12-week class, um, one night a week for about two to three, two, three, 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 two to three hours, two to three hours, and um, then we graduate, and we go to uh, a memory care facility once a month, we go to a nursing home once a month, to Barnes Hospital lobby, and we hang out in the lobby, but then sometimes uh, patients want to see us, so we'll go up and to the patient room. <coughs> and then we also do an adult daycare. Um, and then we do a lot of fill-in stuff, too, like um, St. Louis University, they have finals week, and we go and help de-stress the kids, and we'll just go to the library, and the kids get to pet the dogs for a couple hours. Um, and that's his job. So you can pet him, as opposed to a service dog. You cannot pet. But we always ask. Yes. Always ask before you pet. And yeah. that's about that's about it. Okay. Anything? Let's do it's the greeting. Okay? okay. So for those of you that have um, younger people around, um, or that like to let people know the right way to do things, <laughs> uh, you want to do safe dog greeting. And if you see a dog out running around, we're going to leave the dog alone. But if somebody's with the dog, you ask. And we always ask so the person is aware that you're interested and we can pay attention to our dog. OK? So I'm going to ask, may I pet your dog, please? Yes. And I'm going to walk up, close my hand, close fingers under, let the dog sniff, 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 sniff. And pet under the chin. Oh, that felt so good. Yes, it does. <laughs> and then I can pet on top. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're so good. So Beck is actually a really good example because a lot of dogs don't like their head touched, and he doesn't like it at all. So I mean, you, you can after you 
let him do what Diane just did, but if you just go up and try to touch his head, it's not me, he can sometimes get a little nervous. Well, that's scary, he's coming up and going, huh? You know? <laughs> I don't want anybody doing that to me either. And if somebody says no when you ask, just say thanks anyway, mm -hmm. because they have a reason. Maybe they're in a hurry, maybe the dog's not friendly, who knows, doesn't matter. So, okay, is there anything else you wanted to show us? Any tricks or? Not a big trick dog. Not a trick dog. <laughs> okay. Well, we're not a trick dog either. We're not a trick dog either. Come here. Oh. Circle. Circle. Come on. We, we show our, um, we do the circles with um, our service dogs and with our therapy dogs because it loosens them up. There you go. And if you have a dog that works for treats, you got it made. Mm -hmm. And that's not a fancy treat, that's a piece of kibble. And that's what I use. Just a piece of dog food. All right, nice job. Woo, all right. Nice. He's two and a half. Yeah, he'll be three in June. So we have different categories of our service dogs. We have our public access that goes all around town. We have our dogs that stay at home. We have a lot of those. People don't get out as much, or they might be with children. So they do many of the same tasks, but they do it within the home. And then we have facility dogs that work in the courtrooms uh, or at hospitals, at rehab centers. And they are trained with a person and live with that person and then go to work with that person. But they don't have public access for anything because they're working in, for a facility. Like if you're a courtroom dog, that's what you're gonna do and then you're off when you're at home. <coughs> Service dogs are off when they're at home too, except she's always on call. She's like a mom or a dad. Mm -hmm. She's on call, but mostly she's off. Unless she hears something drop, and then it's like, ooh, I better get busy. <laughs> she says, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Oh, there she says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Here's a tear. Calgary <laughs> said, you know what? One time we started a program, and my mom forgot, <laughs> I need my food. <laughs> So she starts her day with her meal, and you notice the treats I was giving her were kibble, dog food. I watch her weight so that she stays nice and trim. The first thing they learn is eye contact, and when they're baby babies, she was eight weeks old when she came to my home, I happened to be her puppy raiser. So she looked at me, the minute she looked at in the eye, I put the food bowl down. I never said anything except free. And she was able to eat. She had permission. And she learned very quickly, if I watch that lady, <laughs> I get food. <laughs> Good job, Kelly. I haven't needed to. She's young enough and she gets enough exercise. I may need to. I really watch. Because I'd get in trouble if she gets, if we if she doesn't have the figure. Yes, take it. <coughs> when you were playing her, thank you. Thank you. So for people that have trouble with balance, the dog can bring the food back, the bowl back. You don't have to bend over. And they bring back empty water bowls, too. Mm -hmm. Except when they're little and they don't know the difference and there's water all over. <laughs> yes? When you acquire a dog, what are the elements of training does that dog go through with you before the dog is assigned to someone? Uh, in the beginning, all of the dogs are puppies and we're socializing and potty breaking them. That's it. Getting them to meet people, introducing them to different floorings, different sounds, different kinds of people, different places, different kinds of transportation. So we're giving them as many experiences as we can, both to, for all of their senses. We're not giving them any commands. 
they're being taught at the prison. And I, I go by the same rules. I'm lucky because I get to see them all their life and I get to work with them. But I never step on the training that's going on at the prison. And if the dog is not ready for me to use a particular command, I don't use it. Because I want them to, to be on the right track with their person. I don't want to mess anything up. Okay. Ready? Okay. She goes, well, you saw my breakfast. Huh? <laughs> and then I, you know, I, we go outside, we run around, and yesterday, you don't want to hear what happened to yesterday, the standard poodle and the other retriever. <laughs> Hunting dogs, right? <laughs> Baby rabbits. <laughs> oh. oh, yes. Not good. Not good for the rabbits, no. Okay, so... Calgary, what would you like to start with? Should we start with the retrieve? Okay. So with the retrieve... Oh, that's so pretty out there. Um, we start with the dumbbell. This one's made out of wood. Some are uh, made out of plastic. The ones that are used for uh, different kinds of training might be made out of metal. So we put it in their mouth. We want them to hold it. They don't want to, but we keep it there. And then we say, give. And they take their mouth off of it. We don't take it away. Take it away, you're getting into tug of war. Mm -hmm. Then they need to learn, once they can hold, good job, they're going to learn to walk around with it. And it isn't a toy, so it's not fun. They do it because we ask them to. And if it starts to slip out, then the lead goes right under it to hold it. Give. Nice. Thank you. Good job, Cal. We use positive reinforcement. Right? Cal, you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Go get it. Whoa. That's a loud one. Yes. Good job, Callie. Give. Thanks. Thank you. Good girl. Yes, you're so fine. So, that's the retrieve. Once that's solid with the dumbbell, <laughs> then we add other items. Uh, and I usually start with a different kind of material, like plastic. Callie, take it. Good girl. Nice. She's so good. She carries things up and down the stairs for me so I can hold on to the handrail. And she looks at my hands <laughs> because sometimes I'll have stuff in both hands and she, she won't move. She just watches till I empty out that one hand and hand her the stuff. More metal, but keys. She had these as a baby that she carried around. Take them. Got it? Oh, good job. Good job. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Cal. And I wanted to show you how they pick up smaller things. This is kind of a big coin, but I bring it because it's a Canadian coin. We have chairs for you. Come on up. Yeah. So I want always bring it to help me remember to tell you that she came from Canada. She came with two brothers and a sister. And one of her brothers is also a working service dog. Um, her sister was very vocal. Oh, we named her Celine. <laughs> it was appropriate, but she went back to Canada. <laughs> and uh, one of her brothers became a pet. The other brother did. So she's going to pick up her coin. And she holds it. Whoa, wait, let's stop. OK, there you go. Got it? Work it. All right. Release. <laughs> I said release because I, if when I say take, that means I have my hands on it and you can back off. But I don't want to have my hands on the coin. It might accidentally go down her throat. So I say release and she flips it out with her tongue. 
And then, of course, it's, of course it's wet, but... <laughs> you know, if, if you're using a walker or um, a cane, wheelchair, crutches, if you have balance issues, have trouble bending over, if your dog can pick that up for you, that is really helpful. Um, we were at, I think it was uh, the bread company one day, and that guy in front of me in line had dropped a $5 bill. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> she picked it up. <laughs> and um, he hadn't heard it fall, but she had seen it fall. And she gave it to me, and I said, thank you. And I gave it to him, and he's like, oh. Oh, I said, it's a little wet. She, he goes, that's okay. He, you know, it was really, it was cute. Um, I don't have um, much carpeting in my house, so when she hears something fall, she will come to pick it up. So they also have to have a really strong leave it. And I usually bring my giant pill to help me remember. We don't want them to pick up any medicine. It might be dangerous for them. So she has a leave it, and we were walking through Walmart a few weeks ago, leave it, and she walked through, uh, you know how they have sell popcorn mm -hmm. up there? Target does too, I think. And um, there's, sometimes it's on the floor, and she walked through a whole sea of it. Ready? Leave it. Good girl. Nice. Go Matt. Wrong. Go Matt. Good job. Okay. So I do not have her pick this up because I want her to clearly know no medicine. Okay. They can pick up the medicine container, however. That'll work just fine. Um, oh, it's inside here. <laughs> Sometimes we have, I don't need, um, I don't have medicine that I need to take that's in the refrigerator. But sometimes we have clients that do. So what we'll do is we'll put the medicine, they'll put the medicine container in like a lunch, you know, a lunch box, a bag, one of those with a handle on it. And they'll put it on a lower shelf. And then um, they'll put a snack in there for the dog, maybe some water, maybe a snack for themselves. And then they'll send the dog to the refrigerator to get it. We have people that, um, folks that have pain issues and can't get out of bed until they've had their medicine, and they'll send the dog to the refrigerator for it. Um, on my refrigerator at home, I have a cord hanging with a tennis ball on the end, and she can open the refrigerator, and then she'll release it and go inside, get the item, come back out, close the door, and deliver it to me. Okay? So she's very helpful. Ready to see her do it? Okay. There's a whole bunch of steps that they have to learn. Cal, you ready? Take door. Good. She released. Went inside. All right. Good job, Cal. All right. You're so fine. You're so fine. Yes. She says, I need a treat. I always give her a treat for this because it's so important. And with Calgary, I don't give her a treat like this because she will get my fingers. She's always been a shark. So I give it to her like that. And that saves my fingers. She's never bitten me, but you can feel her teeth, and it's like, yikes. Yikes. Yes. Good job. Yeah. She says, oh, oh. Okay, Kelly. Let's see. What else? Oh. She's going to fly for the emergency phone. And we put a little extra help on it, which is a piece of leather, so the, the dog can grab it easier. And this is a very old-fashioned phone. Um, 
the ones we use um, with our current dogs stand up and then the base has to be almost velcroed to something because they're so lightweight and the dog can fly, you know, it just doesn't work as easy as the old fashioned kind do. However, um, the dog will grab it and bring it to them. So I'm going to put, the, put it right here and I'll send her for it. They will come in from outside. They'll come in from upstairs, downstairs, doesn't matter. If I say I need help, she's on it. And she moves pretty fast. Kelly, I need help. Go 911. Oh, get it off the floor. Got it? Keep working it. OK. She brought it. OK, very good. Should I give her a reward? Thank you. Should I give her a reward? Yes. No. no. Remember, I wanted her to pick it up that way. Has she been taught to pick it up that way? Yes. So we'll do it again. And when that happens, uh, part of it was the slick floor. Part of it, she was flying too fast. I tell the kids, this is great. Now you can see what we do when they make a mistake. We don't get angry. We give them a chance to get it right. Okay, Callie, I need help. Go 911. Is that the command, 911? That's, why, that's the one I say. Good girl! Yay, Calgary! You did it! Yes! All right! Yes! Because, oh, 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 I get my cheese. Oh, I'm so happy. She gets her cheese. Get to look. And then when I'm with kids, I'll say, look at your fin little finger and look at the nail on your little finger. That's about the size of the piece of cheese she's going to get. And I go, oh. <laughs> because we don't want to upset their tummy, right? And even that little piece, I'm going to break up into smaller pieces. There you go. Oh, that's so good. Yes. Oh, that tastes, tastes so good. Tastes so good. Yes, yes, yes. Good job, Kevin. You did so fine. Yes, you did. So they always get a treat for getting medicine. They get a treat for the emergency phone. And they get a treat for coming when you call them. Mine do. That's one of my rules. If you come when I call you, all right. That's a good thing. We hop around. Yes. OK, she helps take off clothing. She takes off my shoes at night. I untie them because I tried with wet shoestrings. Doesn't work. And um, she takes off my socks. And when she takes my socks off, then she'll put them in the laundry basket. <laughs> this is my pretend laundry basket. Right? Right. And let's see. I'll show you the laundry. I'll show you the basket thing with the clicker in a minute. OK? So I'm going to take off my sock. Got it? Oh, good. Kelly, basket. Get all the way in. Oh, didn't go all the way. Get it. Get the rest of it. Yes. All right. <laughs> so another mar a marker word for her is yes. That's like the clicker. It can be substituted so you don't always have to have a clicker with you. So she uh, learned to take things off with the oven mitt first because they grab. Kelly. Oh, good. And she'll release. Good. Take another finger. Get a little more. Oh, very good. Very good. OK. Basket. Where's my basket? There it is. Release. <laughs> good job. Good job, Cal. OK. All righty. Oh, let's see. Oh. OK. Clicker, clicker, clicker. What did I do? Oh, there it is. So I wanted to show you how they learn to put stuff in a basket. We have treats. Almost all of our dogs like treats. I don't think we've had, if they didn't like them, they've learned that's a reward 
because maybe they weren't exposed to them. That, that would be probably a, more of a rescue dog, because most of the other ones have grown up with us. So with the clicker, we're going to do basket. And I'm going to put a treat in my hand and draw her head into the basket. And when it goes down where I want it, I'm going to click. And then she knows when she gets a click, she gets a treat. So her head's already in the basket, all the way in. Okay. Then you add the word basket. Yeah. <laughs> basket. When it was in far enough, basket. Yes, we get further away. Basket. Good, nice. You already saw her. Did she catch it? I don't think she caught a ball yet, did she? So. She likes to play ball. Loves to play ball. Ready? Always bring a soft one in case it accidentally bumps somebody. Ready? Okay. All right. Basket. Release. Yay. Good job. Give me five. All right. Good girl. Good girl. One kid said, can she dunk? I'm like, oh. No, neither can I. <laughs> no, we can't dunk. Um, we do some things with um, clicker. It depends on the thing. Um, if I'm teaching something new, a lot of times I'll introduce the clicker just to get their attention. Like, oh, I just did that. Oh, that was a good thing. To really mark it. Good job. Champ goes around, oh gosh. We see so many different people, and in our education program, it's really cool. We see little ones, preschoolers, all the way up to senior citizens. We go to not-for-profit organizations, um, military um, groups like um, Parkinson's. We're going to do that in a couple weeks. We'll go talk with the group over in Illinois. We go all over. It's very, very enjoyable. Um, one of the reasons I need a service dog is when I'm with the little kids and I'm down on the floor, I can't get up. Well, I can if I crawl around and find something. <laughs> um, but that's awkward. <laughs> um, so she's my second one. And um, she's wonderful. She's a very serious worker, good to, <coughs> good to brace. I don't put a lot of weight on her, I just need a little bit. Um, <coughs> my other boy, my, my first one, he, he liked everybody and he just wanted to meet everybody and he, he couldn't, you know, he had to work, so um, she can do it both. So I'm really glad that she's able to meet people. Thank you very much. We are very welcome. They are very welcome. Uh, so we have an ending trick. Callie, Callie, you ready? She says, oh, get my mat out. OK, everybody. Is she a blue fan? Of course. Of course, <laughs> yes. Well, actually, we used to be a Rams fan, too. Oh, well, that's OK. <laughs> and my cat was named after Skeeter, or after Steven Jackson, so. So come up, sit. Hey, sit pretty. Oh, oh, oh. Calgary and I visit at the USO. And Champ goes in every week there, visits with the military. And we're also doing, uh, going to the honor flights to see the folks off. And that's very, very touching. Very touching. So we go to Barnes, go to the transplant unit. Yes, and we do some subbing for Cardinal Glennon. Yeah. I started at Cardinal Glennon um, 25 years ago, 26, and um, it's, um, it's grown, and um, we have one of our facility dogs there, so, yes, right? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.